Okay, day three, Instagram growth workshop. So today we are diving into putting it all together using Instagram strategy. So first, I want to take a look back and I want to recap what have we learned and what uh, did I ask you to do up to this point? So at this point, you should have nailed your niche. You should have done a lot of thought on this written your Instagram bio using the formula. I posted a guide for you to follow. We have a lot of examples and I try to give as much feedback as possible. I will do one more round to go back through all of those threads and try to make sure everybody gets responded to. Again, I'm one person, so I'm trying, but that is the goal. Number three is for you to have decided Um, or worked on your free resource, that fun call to action. So for some of you, you're going to create like a guide. um, And then for some of you, you're doing a special offer. And for some of you, you're just at the point where you simply are asking them to DM you for more information or to visit your website. Okay. And then the last thing that we did on day two was we discussed the eight types of content you want to be cycling through. And today I'm going to introduce like, well, how do I take those ideas? How do I take those concepts and actually like really have a solid Instagram strategy? Okay. And that's what we're talking about today. So you should have at least written down and brainstormed some ideas for your types of content. Okay. So now let's put it all together and get you your Instagram strategy. So there's going to be a lot of note taking again today, because you need to make sure that you're creating an Instagram strategy for you based off of what feedback I am giving you. Okay. Not everybody's Instagram strategy is going to look the same. It shouldn't, it should not be copy and paste, um, but this will give you a great framework to follow. Okay. The first question is, how often should I be posting? I love this question. So I don't believe in posting 365 days a year. No one has time for that, especially if you're a wife, you're a mom, you're a husband. I know we have some guys here, so um, you might be a parent, you might work a full-time job, you might... Um, have to wear all of these additional hats other than just being a photographer and a business owner. Okay. So I am not, you're, I'm not the guru for you that is going to tell you that we need to be showing up every second of every day, seven days a week, brain or shine. And if you take a day off, then it's your fault why you don't have um, a following. That is not, you're never going to hear me say that because that is not true. Okay. So Again, I want you to, the entire time we go through this, in your mind, quality over quantity, okay? And even the algorithm has shown that they are, they want you to create more quality than they want you to do quantity. Now, does the algorithm want you to be on their platform 24-7? Yes, because that's what it's designed for. But they also know no human is going to do that, okay? So, That's when we mesh together. Okay, we learn strategy, we learn like some algorithm techniques, and then we also have to marry that to our lifestyle. Okay, so I'm going to set you free right now. You do not need to show up seven days a week, 365 days a year. And I'm going to also give you one unpopular opinion as well. You can take a break from social media at any point in time that you want to. You're not going to miss out. You're not going to miss a client. You're not going to miss booking. It wasn't for you. Okay. All right. Here we go. So I recommend that you find a schedule that works for you. Okay. So for me, that is about four to five times a week and then taking a break on the weekends. Now understand like this is my full-time job. Okay. I don't do anything else other than run my photography business and educate you guys. That's, this is what I do for a living. Okay. For some of you, that is still going to sound like too much. I will give you a minimum. I think you need to at least show up three days out of the week. If you could aim for three, if that's the best you can do, I would do three. 
ideally I'd like to see you at this four to five times a week. And it doesn't like, it doesn't have to require you more than two, two, two and a half hours a week to show up, get all your engagement done and really be there for, for your, um, for your account. Okay. So find a schedule that works for you. Now, here's the thing right now on your paper or right now in the comments, I want you to tell me how many days a week right now can you commit to? And I want you to put it right here. Okay. So drop it in the comments and I'll drop mine in the comments too. So mine is I'm going to commit to four times a week for all of um, October. Now, while you guys are dropping yours in the comments, I also want to tell you that I, and I kind of told you guys this on, I can't remember if it was day one or day two, but I know that I told you I'm in a season where my social media hasn't, like I haven't been your best example in the past 30 days. I've just had a lot going on. Our world is very heavy right now. And I've had to just be okay that I can't, that I wasn't able to create content for my feed. I, I'm not able right now to go record a bunch of reels. Like my headspace is very limited right now. And so I have, I have shown up real hardcore in my stories, um, in, in my DMs, having conversations with you guys and then pouring into my podcast. Okay. So that's why we were able to blow up this Instagram workshop to get so many of you here. Okay. So I just want you to understand as a side note, again, it's okay to take a break. My business has not suffered just because I didn't post on my account. Now on the flip side, for those of you that are on the opposite side of the spectrum, maybe you're brand new, maybe you're pivoting, maybe you've never really had success on Instagram. Okay, here's the key for you. I want you to commit to yourself for all of October to show up as much as you possibly can to get consistent. Okay, we're going to talk about consistency in a minute, but because it means something different to what a lot of people are preaching on, but you have to, you do have to get the momentum going before you can ride the momentum. Okay. So I put in the time, the sweat, the hard work, the, the missing out on a couple of things to get myself to a place where I can have that momentum in my business. And then now I have the luxury of being able to ride it for a little while. It won't last forever. Right. Um, but I just wanted to give you all that side note in case you're like, this girl has said all these things and the last time she posted was like two weeks ago. I know and I want to be transparent with you on why and show you that you really can take a break and your business won't suffer, right? Okay, moving on. So with that being said, I want you guys to take yourself back to day two, all those content ideas that we came up with. So now we know like the nitty gritty, we know our messaging, we know our topics, right? But now you're like, okay, I've got this concept. Um, I have all these different things I want to say and I want to create content for, but what type of content do I actually need to spend my time creating? Should I be focusing on posts, reels, or stories? And the answer is, I want you to do a combination of all three. And I really broke this down for you. Okay. So I recommend doing a combination of all of these in this capacity. And again, this is my framework. So if you said three days, then you are going to show up daily in your stories for all three of those days. And you're going to have three amazing quality feed posts, maybe two. And then your third feed post is actually going to be a reel. Okay. So you're responsible. If you said three days, then you are responsible for creating um, three, six, nine, 12, about 12 pieces of content a month. And you can absolutely do that. Like that is doable. And instead of like doing them in real time or instead of trying to like scramble at the last minute, like, oh my gosh, I need to post and I haven't posted all week. I want you guys to try and batch create. So all that means is that you're gonna pick maybe a Sunday afternoon, where you're going to have an hour and a half to two hours that you can sit in front of your computer and you can just like take all those concept ideas, either write some captions, um, figure out what things do you really want to dive in on your stories, 
Um, what can you create reels for? That would be five to seven seconds. That's really all people really need a reel for. The 30 seconds is even becoming too much. So I would say if you can create a reel 20 seconds or less that covers your concept and allows them to read more in the caption, boom, that's all you need. Okay. So if we're talking four reels a month, then you're talking 20, 40, 60, like a minute and 20 seconds of actual like video recording that you need. Okay. Now, does it take, you know, longer than a minute 20 to record? Yes. But I'm just showing you how in half an hour you could bang out four different reels. Okay. So I want you to show up daily in your stories. And when I say daily, this means the days you're showing up to be consistent. And then two to three quality feed posts and one to two reels per week. This is all doable, even if you're working another job. You just have to want to do the work. So I can hand you, this dropped into my mind, my, my spirit yesterday. I know that sounds real weird, I'm sorry. But I was cleaning out the garage and I was listening to some music and all of a sudden this thought came down in my head and I just feel like I need to share it. I can hand you the keys to the kingdom, the keys to that photography business that you want, but I can't do the work for you. I can't make you, I can't take your hand holding the key and put it into the lock and open the door. I, I can't do that. That's, that's where you have to do the work. So this whole week, I'm giving you the keys. I'm giving you the strategy, but you have to actually be responsible for doing the work. Those who do the work, are the ones that are going to come back a week, a month, two months from now and be like, hey, my business has changed so much. I've had X number of bookings and it's all because I applied what I learned from your Instagram workshop. And I'm going to be like, yes, let's share it. Let's shout it from the rooftops, right? Because you put in the work. So I just want to just want to say that because there's a, a lot more to this today and it requires work. This is not going to happen from you keeping all this knowledge up here and then thinking it's gonna change the game for you. It's not, okay? You have to do the work. Okay, so looking at the eight types of content, I'm giving you an example schedule for a family photographer that decided, hey, I'm gonna show up five times per week. Great. So on Monday, that's day one, okay? I'm going to show up and I am going to post a reel and I'm going to be active in my stories. That is my whole plan for Monday. Awesome. On Tuesday, I'm going to have a feed post. And again, I'm going to be back in my stories. On Wednesday, I'm just going to be in my stories. There's nothing extra. I'm just showing up in my stories in some capacity. On Thursday, I'm going to post another reel and I'm going to show up in my stories. And then on Friday, I'm going to do one more feed post and I'm going to continue to show up in my stories. And then for Saturday and Sunday, I'm going to disconnect from social. I'm not going to log in. I'm not going to post. I'm not going to look at it. I just kind of want to forget about it. Right. And I'll come back in ready to go on Monday. So this is an example. So that's two reels, stories every single day and two posts. That's it. Do y'all see how doable this can actually be? And again, if you're only doing three times per week, then it would be like one half of the training. Okay. Okay. Um, so let's dive a little bit deeper. So I told you like, here's the structure, but what are you actually like posting about Brooke? Okay, here we go. You ready? So again, we're talking about a family photographer. So on Monday, that reel I told you about the topic that I came up with is five after school activities to do with your kids. Okay. So I'm not, again, it's not always about just photography, but the mama I want to serve in my business wants to be more connected to her kids. So I'm going to help her get more connected with her kids by giving her five after school activities she can do with them. Okay. In my stories, here's some like examples of what I could show. I could show my morning routine with my kids. It does not have to be fancy. It could be like, hey, look at us. We're a hot mess. I give my kids 20 minutes to grab a bite to eat, throw their clothes on and get their backpacks and we're running out the door, right? Um, it, I mean, it could be as real as that. Behind the scenes editing, okay? So maybe like while they're at school, I am going to um, show you some behind the scenes. I'm gonna do some tap here to edit, who knows? 
And then um, after school, I'm going to pop up on my stories a little bit later, and I'm going to show myself doing one of those activities that I posted earlier that day in my reel and show them how I'm using it with my own kids. Boom. Monday's done. Okay, cool. Tuesday. So today I'm going to make a post called the day I lost my at the supermarket. Okay. So and that's going to be so relatable to my other moms, because how many of you have gone to the grocery store? And also, I probably wouldn't call it supermarket. That was just me getting real fancy with words. Um, but I would probably call it the grocery store. Like the worst thing in the world is to take my kids to the grocery store, because I promise you at least one of them is in a bad mood by the time we leave, because mama said no to one too many things, right? And then in my stories, I am going to, again, show that morning routine with my kids. Again, it could be something funny. Maybe it's like consistent every single day. Like what time do you think we ran out the door this morning, right? And then three boutiques to shop for fall wardrobe for kids and yourself, okay? So I'm giving a little bit of personal and then I'm turning around and I'm sharing three local boutiques in my area to shop to help um, them get fall wardrobe. Maybe it's for pictures, maybe it's just for their life. On day three, this is Wednesday stories. So I'm only on stories for Wednesday. I'm showing the morning routine with my kids again. I'm showing off galleries of family clients that I've had. And then I'm sharing some testimonials or screenshots of texts that I've received after someone has seen either a sneak peek or their full gallery, okay? so. Then Thursday, again, another real topic that would fit into all of this and the eight types of content would be two reasons to book your family session in October. And then I would give two really good reasons. It, it, it would be location-based. Um, and then it would probably be like, this is more than enough time for me to edit your pictures, get them back to you. And you can be early for holiday cards or something like that. In my stories, I could share an opinion on public school, which FYI, like I really don't have an opinion. My kids go to public school. Um, and as a side note, if I feel like I ever need to bring them home, I do have a teaching degree and I would just homeschool them. Okay, so I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, but again, that's the polarizing opinion. So I would share that in my stories. Um, morning routine with kids again. And then I could share something promotional, which would be fall dates left to actually book their session. So here's what's left if you want a fall session. And then finally, I'd wrap the week up with Friday. I would have a post how to save $300 in one month. The reason why is because I love to share budgeting tips, but I also, um, again, am it's an objection post, right? We talked about objections. I can't afford that. Well, I'm going to show you how you can start being in control of your money so that you, you know, you don't have to say, oh, I can't afford that. Okay. So then in your stories uh, or in my stories, it could be budgeting tips because it relates to my post. And then after school routine with those kids, show behind the scenes of sessions or galleries, and then an announcement that I'm logging off for the weekend and I'll be back to check my messages and all of my emails on Monday morning. So no one has to wonder where Brooke went for the weekend, okay? So that's like a deep dive example of how you rotate different types of post stories reels with the eight types of content that I taught you on day two. Drop me a thumbs up or hit the, the thumb emoji if you're with me. Y'all are real quiet today, real quiet today. I just wanna make sure you're with me. And I'm really sorry, I talk with my hands a lot. I'm sure some of you can relate. Okay, I see some thumbs up, so I think we're, I think we're going good. Okay, so now, that we know that, let's dive into some Instagram features, okay? So for your feed, does it even matter what the feed looks like and what purpose does it actually play? I think I get this question almost as much as I get hashtags, which we're diving into in a minute. So your feed, does matter. It does. Like, I'm not going to lie to you because if your feed is inconsistent or if it's a hot mess, then I'm going to have a really hard time connecting with like with what you're about. And so it definitely does matter because when someone comes to your profile, especially for the first time, 
they will typically scroll your entire feed and some of your content to see if you're really like someone they want to work with. So at this point, they're just looking for, you know, the different things you bring to the table um, and, and visually. So typically the first thing is, if they're coming to your profile, are they even interested in your editing style? That's typically the first question that's up sub or subconsciously um, circulating through someone's head. And myself too, when we go on vacation and I'm looking for a photographer, I really am checking out your style before I check out anything else. If I like your style, then I'm diving into, okay, like what, what else do you have to offer? Okay, so it does matter, but there's no like, there's no feed visually, like there's no pattern that you have to follow. Those days are gone. Those were Instagram 2010. We're so far past that, okay? Um, we're a whole decade ahead of that. And what I mean is like, if it's aesthetically pleasing, if you tell me you're a wedding photographer, when I scroll your feed, I should see your beautiful images speak for themselves. And it should be all about weddings, brides, grooms, etc. Okay, that's what I should see. I and reels, of course. Um, so yes, so there's that. Okay, so again, your feed doesn't need to be perfect, but it does need to represent your brand and your target market well. If you are a wedding photographer seeking to book brides who want intimate backyard weddings, she needs to see a feed full of content and images that speaks to that, okay, that draws her in, that solidifies her decision for you. Okay. So I should see wedding images showcasing those emotions, intimate details and backyard weddings. If that's what you're saying that you specialize in, right? She also needs to see some variety of reels that help speak to her pain points and her desires, her objections and promotions. Okay. So again, doesn't need to be perfect, but this is why having a niche is so important. You should be able to tell me and I should be able to see it. And if those two things don't align, there's called a seed of confusion. And they will probably overlook you and go with someone else. That is for sure, for sure. Like they know what they have. Okay. All right. So best types of feed posts. I get this a lot. Should they be single images? Should they be carousels? Yes, they should be carousels. So right now, one of the, the two top performing types of content on Instagram are carousels and reels, okay? Now on your carousels, those are simply, for those of you that have never done this before, they're the, the type of posts where you do multiple images and you swipe through them, okay? But there's a catch. So for some, you want to make sure that the first image someone lands on, like you want to give someone a reason to want to scroll past. And so this, correlates with your caption. The first line, because that's really all Instagram shows you now, when I see you guys post on my feed, I can really only see um, your image and like the first one or two lines of your caption. That right there has to hook me and make me go, oh, I have to see this. So maybe it's, you'll never believe what happened uh, before this ceremony swipe, swipe to find out or something like that to where I'm like, oh my gosh, like, yes, let me look, right? The reason carousels work is because the, and let me just educate you in a very elementary way of the algorithm. The algorithm is designed to keep users entertained. So that person on the other end of your content, all Instagram cares about is keeping things fresh and alive. And it, it literally like is choosing every single time you log into your app, what are you most interested in right now? Like they basically try to be a mind reader. And the goal for you as a creator is to get your people to spend the most amount of time possible on your image, on your post. So if you're doing one single image, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm lazy. I, I just don't read long captions anymore unless I'm just in the mood to read. I don't know if you guys can feel me on that, but I just, I just don't, I'm a skimmer and I'm so sorry for it, but a lot of people are too. So the shorter, the better, first of all, for captions. Um, and I want you to say as much as possible in your carousels. So if you're going to educate your bride or your family or your mother or whoever you're speaking to, I would have your carousel have some images of your work, but also put text on top of your images as they scroll 
to where like, you don't have to say everything in your caption. If you're giving me three tips, I want to see that, that jaw dropping scroll stopping image. And then when I swipe, I want to see tip one, tip two, tip three. Awesome. I took the time to read that every sec, every second counts toward you. It benefits you. And then Instagram says, Oh, this is like, people care about this. Awesome. And the more you can do that, the more you're going to have more people, more engagement, all of those things. Okay. So that's why reels are so popular too, is because people, it's like a mindless activity. We don't have to do anything. We just watch it. And every time it restarts, it counts as a view. It counts as a view. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, I can't watch a reel once. I typically am watching a reel up to three times to fully understand what it was about. That is the whole point. It is entertainment, okay? So that's why those two types of content should get your most, um, most of your effort and your time and your energy. That's because they're working. Single images are kind of working against you right now because people, they don't even have to, they can literally see it as they scroll on by and you're not going to get the engagement you're hoping for. Okay. All right. I think we have nailed that topic. Okay. Here's a question that I get a lot. And some of you are awesome at this. And some of you are like, here we go. Do I have to show up in my stories? Yes you do. It's no longer like, it's just not even negotiable at this point. Two years ago, eh, if you showed up in your stories, great. Um, it's, it's whatever you want to do. But now that the feed is not the main priority stories are, that's where you need to be. That's where you are going to build those relationships. Okay. So why are stories important? Well, part of building your brand is absolutely showing your face using your voice and making a connection with your target market. The only way to do this effectively is by using your stories. It's where you can show up 1000% authentic. It's where you can share things outside of just your photography industry. It is where you can show your personality. You can share your values and none of it counts against you, right? Stories help build consistency and relationships. People are addicted to reality TV for a reason. So while your bride or your mom might not care how you make your salad, or if you're having a bad hair day, she does care to see you in your marriage, in your motherhood, how you work with brides and what you bring to the table that sets you apart. Okay. This is what your person cares about. And sorry that I keep giving wedding analogies when I like really work with like family photographers, motherhood photographers, all of that. But I've done weddings too. And it's all the same. It doesn't matter what your, what your niche is. It's all the same. And there's so many topics and rabbit holes I could go down. So, um, but the whole point is like, that's truly where people will start reacting. They will start talking back to you. They will sometimes um, even disagree with you and not in a, like a nasty way, but like, that's how you get the conversation started. Okay. We have to go back to human to human interaction. This is where it happens. Okay. So show up in those stories as much as you can, even if you're like, Hey, I actually would like to show up in my story six out of seven days a week. Amazing. Okay. So just like you would have those content pillars in your eight types of content, you're also going to have story pillars, okay? So what makes you you, right? How do people describe your brand? And what is something you do on a regular basis? That is like a guideline, a starting point for what you're going to share in your stories, okay? What, and again, get in the shoes of your client. What do they need to see to feel seen? What do they need to hear to feel heard? What do they need to see in order to give you credibility and give them or and, um, allow them to be able to trust you? What, what do they want to see? We've got to take ourselves out of it. If you are like, I'm so self-conscious, I don't want to show up in stories, you have to get over yourself in the most loving way. Like you've got to let that go. No one cares. Also, here's a challenge for you. And I was highly convicted on this one, but like, 
I used to start, it, it's just everyone, no one feels completely awesome on camera, not even me. Like I still feel stupid sometimes showing up in my stories. Like I just posted a picture of me in the middle of crying, which seems like really stupid. Like, why would you do that? But I was trying to share my heart, like, like legit, this bothers me. Okay. So, um, for those of you, like, it's not about you. And also when you're, so the conviction, sorry, back to the conviction, when people, it drives me nuts and you lose the intimacy of what you're talking about when you're so concerned with what you look like. So if you, every time you get on, you're like, oh my gosh, my hair, I'm sorry, guys. No one cares. No one, no one cares. And I was like, oh God, that's me. And I have really tried to stop doing that. Okay. So like, no, no one cares. They're just there to see like, what content do you have to share? In fact, I'm glad your hair is a mess. I'm glad you got eyeliner under your eyes because you're taking care of your four kids at home and trying to run a photography business. Like that makes you relatable. We're not like, you don't need to be polished to show up in your stories. So anyway, side note, there's that. Okay. So an example, a family photographer who specializes in families with three plus kids and has a brand that represents faith. So these are content pillars, faith, motherhood, and marriage will use faith, motherhood, and marriage as her story pillars. Okay. So here are examples. Every morning she could showcase the revelation she had during her Bible study time. That's just something she could share. Um, she could regularly share tips on how she feeds her family on a budget and quickly. That is very helpful for most families. She could go on a date night and share behind the scenes of that date night and give ideas for her target audience. And she will also sprinkle in the eight types of content we previously talked about to tie her business and brand all together. But like the three things that make her who she is would be faith, motherhood, and marriage. So what are the three things, the three categories that literally like you um, are your values or are what you are, what you stand on? Okay. They could be completely different. Maybe for you, like one of your things is you're obsessed with coffee and everybody knows it. So coffee, like share your morning. Like, how do you make your coffee? How do you take it? Is it the same always? Do you go to the Starbucks line? And I know that that example, I feel like is so overdone and so many people do it, but I just want you to see like what I'm talking about. Another thing could be like, do you have two minutes while you're waiting in the school pickup line to go live in your store or not live? I always call it live to go in your stories and share something. And that right there could potentially be a pillar for you. The school drop-off line every day, everyone knows they're going to get used to it, that you show up Monday through Friday or Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or whatever that looks like for you at three o'clock, they can expect you um, to have something new in your stories. And they're like, oh, I can't wait to see what she's talking about today. Okay. So start thinking about it like that. Okay. How to increase engagement in your stories. These are really good. So write these tips down. Tip number one, and I think I've already said this, but don't make it all about you. Ask yourself when you are getting ready to post something, does this relate to my target market? And will it help her, inspire her, or help her take an action? Okay, now, Sometimes I still share something for the sake of sharing it because I like it. Okay. But 90% of the time when I am posting, and this isn't about like being fake or being salesy or being businessy, but just ask, like, does this actually relate to my person um, in some form or fashion? Like, am I helping her? Am I inspiring her? Um, am I encouraging them to take an action, right? Like, am I bringing value to my stories today? And sometimes bringing value is just sharing your life. Um, just to let that other mom know, like, your life is chaotic, just like hers. Like, she's not, she's not less than, she's not missing out on something. We all have a hot mess life. It's just how we choose to get through it, right? So again, tip number one, don't always make it all about you. It's okay to share things that have nothing to do with your business, obviously, um, or even her, even your target market, but just make sure it all connects at the end of the day. Tip number two, make your stories a two-way conversation. So this, this is the game changer right here. So biggest mistake I see is that the majority of you are talking at 
your audience, at your target market, at your followers, at me, instead of with us, instead of with your target market, bring them into the conversation. Okay. So if you feel like um, on your stories, it's just something people tap through, they're not really engaging with it, then you're probably talking at them or you're not giving them an opportunity to say anything. Okay. So try every chance you get, if it makes sense to add a poll, ask a question, use the question box, offer feedback. Okay. Use the quiz feature. There's a reason features exist on Instagram. Use them. Okay. Find a way to bring them into the conversation. Always, every single time that you possibly can. Um, not always, right? Sometimes I can post some, like post some encouragement or a quote that just like hits me. And I know that I'll come back later and my DMs will have like, you guys respond with like the fire emoji or you guys respond with like the sad face. Um, and that also is asking for engagement. Sometimes you don't have to ask for it. Like you just kind of know that it's there and the people that it'll resonate with, they're going to send you that emoji too. But make it a two-way conversation. Always pretend like you are talking to someone else on the other side of the screen, not an audience, not a stadium of people, but one person sitting across from you at a restaurant. Okay. That will help a lot. And tip three is save your stories to highlights. Not all of them, not every single one, but you should have highlights. If you don't know what I'm talking about, they're the circles. I don't know why I always do that. Um, they're the circles that if you come to my profile, you'll see them. They sit before my, my feed starts. And these are the five highlights I'd like to see you all have on your Instagram. Because for me, when I go to y'all's profiles to look at them, I actually am looking for your highlights because I know that I can tap through them and I can learn who you are. I can see your work. I can see what you offer super fast without ever having to go to your website. So take advantage of these. Your highlights are almost like website pages or important sections on a website that you would have. So the five you need are start here. So in your start here highlight, it's basically like, hey, uh, my name's Brooke. I am a wife and a mom and I live in blah, blah, blah. If you want to share your state or your city or wherever, um, I specialize in blank type of photography. Here's a little bit about how I got started. Um, and then you're basically just trying to relate your story to them to share like how you got started. Okay. So the second one is work with me. This can change. So this could be work with me. This could be packages. This could be services, whatever you want this to say. And then when people click on it, you're just like, you're basically introducing them into like, here's kind of how I work. And then the next one would be process. So these kind of relate to each other, but your process is tell me what happens after I decide to book with you. Like, give me a little timeline. What happens next? Right. Do, are you going to help me prep? Do you have a client closet? Are you going to send me a style guide or a prep guide? Or um, how long is it going to take? me to see sneak peeks or to see the full gallery and how does your ordering process work have a highlight that says all of this it's going to save you a thousand hours of q a i promise you number four client love you should be updating client love in your stories every single week you should be sharing testimonials screenshots of text messages Literally every client you work with that is pleased with your work that fills out a testimonial, you need to be sharing those in your stories every single week, saving them to client love. The more, the merrier, okay? And the last one is behind the scenes. This is literally you. Like you can share whatever you want. At sessions, prepping, are you choosing, you know, wardrobe for people? How do you respond to certain questions? It could be all of those things, okay? And then some extra categories if you wanna go above and beyond this one could be some of those quick tips, personal topic of choice, and then anything else, maybe like a value or if you advocate for something or if you're really known for something or like a home renovation project, then you could have an additional highlight just as something fun to have, okay? Okay, reels, but do I have to? No. No, you don't have to do reels. I'm going to tell you right now, you do not have to do reels. But if you do, it will tremendously help you. It really will. I promise you. So 
moving on. Oh, where did the... Okay, there is supposed to be, and I hope it's coming up soon. Um, there is a free Reels masterclass that you will have access to in your day three workbooks. I posted that in the group already, um, and it should have a link that you can click on in your email and it will take you there. If it does not work, it is in my big group, Book More Clients um, for Photographers. I, I don't even know the book more clients group uh, with the 8,000 photographers, that group, it is in there. And if you will just click the little search bar and type in reels masterclass, it will pop up. It's free. Watch it. Shannon does a phenomenal job of teaching you all the things. Um, and she has a resource if you're interested as well to go deeper. Okay. Do I need to use hashtags? Okay. Nope, you don't. I do not use hashtags for any like um, gaining clients reasons, okay? Let me explain my focus or my, my reasoning for this, okay? Hashtags work for certain industries where their ideal client is using hashtags correctly. Let me give you an example, okay? For if you are in direct marketing, Okay, you're in network marketing or you are doing some side business, you all have hashtags so you can find each other, so you can find your product, so the company can get their name out there. And then when someone hears about it, um, they will stumble upon these hashtags and then they will find a representative that they love and then they'll order products from them. Okay, our clients are regular everyday people, most of them. And they don't even understand what a hashtag is. Like literally people now say, and I'm totally guilty of this, like hashtag, oh my gosh, uh, that's what she said. That's the first one I thought of. I'm so sorry. But anyway, but like we literally say that in conversation now. People don't understand how to use hashtags. So our clients, when they're writing out their caption about their kids going back to school for the first day, um, they'll hit a couple of hashtags that might be legitimate real hashtags but then they're just like hashtag and they're writing sentences like after the hashtag right like hashtag yay summer's over like no one is actually using that um to for any other purpose than because they think it looks cool okay so our clients don't know how to use hashtags now on the flip side before some of y'all are like wait hold up right Hashtags can help you, but here's how. You have to understand like the purpose of using hashtags is not necessarily for you to find new clients because for the most of you, that's not going to happen, okay? But they can help because they can help you become featured, be found. Um, so a lot of the feature sites, they all have hashtags. If you guys are using presets, there's hashtags for those. If you are in a program, we have hashtags for that, right? There is a small majority of you out there where location hashtags can help a client find you. But again, most clients have to understand how to use them. So I guarantee you the first thought people have that have no idea how to use Instagram is not let me go find a photographer through a hashtag. That's typically not what's happening. They're typically, again, going for word of mouth, asking for recommendations, doing a Google search, or literally typing in the search bar, Sacramento wedding photographer, or Seattle family photographer, and then they're finding you. It's not through a hashtag, okay? So can anybody, like, is that a sigh of relief for anybody in the comments? I just, I'm curious. Like, you don't have to stress about hashtags. Now, if you want to use them strategically, or if you have found success using them in your industry, maybe you're an elopement photographer, and those brides have really figured out how to use those. Really, if unless you're a wedding photographer, or in a specific location, like a beach, like for tourist attraction, I have never really had help from hashtags. I just haven't. Um, and I have used all of the other ways using SEO and they work way better than hashtags. So, okay, good. I'm making sure that you guys are like, yay. So guess what? I'm not using hashtags anymore and you don't have to either. I promise you it will not make you. It will not break you. It can only help you if you find that it is um, a positive thing for you to use. Okay. 
All right. Yes. So Shelby said, I like to use only location-based hashtags. Awesome. And if you want to only use those, that is fantastic. I think that they absolutely, someone can stumble upon that and find you. I just know that the first place people are going is pretty much not a hashtag unless your name is Brooke and you know that some photographers um, like hashtag the beach that they photograph at. And that's kind of how I like frantically was searching for a beach photographer for us. But that's because I understood how to use hashtags. Our people, they don't. Okay, how to get more engagement on your posts. A lot of you earlier, I saw there was some comments. I did not read them because I didn't want to get distracted. But you guys were asking like, about um, apps like or is there a scheduling app that you prefer okay number one you need to be posting in real time <gasps> what oh I know but you can use an app like Planoly, Plan, Tailwind I mean there's so many out there Facebook has one now to prep your content but you need to be posting in real time Okay, so when I told you, like, here's how you batch everything, it means write all your captions, pull all your images, create all your graphics, record all your reels, but we're not going to schedule those to get posted when we're not actually online. Okay, this is where if you don't, I mean, like, you'll still get a little bit of engagement, but Instagram has like flat out said, we do not want you uh, scheduling and posting things. Okay it's going to hurt you. Like at the end of the day, you're not going to get the best reach you could have got. Okay. So that's number one, post in real time, plan it all out, but set yourself an alarm to remind you to actually push it through and post. Okay. Number two. Yes, Cameron. Correct. It's still an app. They want you in real time. Okay. Number two, scroll and engage for 10 to 15 minutes before you post and then start engaging on your post and other people's posts 10 to 15 minutes after you post. So you basically need to set aside half an hour that you can dedicate to Instagram on the days that you are going to post a reel or a post. Stories are different, okay? A lot of people don't see your stories until a few hours after it's posted. And some not even until it's almost expired 24 hours later, okay? So scroll and engage. Look, go in your stories, follow your clients. This does not mean go and engage with other photographers. That's really not going to help your case. Um, you can, but you need to be really um, engaging with clients. And we're talking about how do we find those in just a second. So um, 10 minutes before you post, then get your post ready, push it through, post it, and then get ready. So as soon as you start getting some likes, go return the favor to some of those clients and then respond to them in the comments. The more you do that, the more you're telling Instagram, I care, I'm here, please push this out to more people. That hasn't always been the case, but that is the current strategy right now. Number three, use hooks and direct CTAs in your captions, make it juicy. So I kind of hit on that earlier. We only get like one line and we typically get two seconds to hook someone in to make them go, oh my gosh, I've got to scroll or I've got to read this caption. So make it juicy and then tell your person what you want them to do. If you want them to leave you a comment, tell them what you want in the comments. If you want them to DM you, if you want them to look at your calendar, if you want them to tag a friend, please tell them what to do, okay? We're all looking for direction. Okay, the fun topic, guys. We are getting so close. I know, like I told y'all, this workshop was jam packed. Okay, how to grow your following with the right people. Um, hold on, I want to answer this question real quick. Karen said, How can you pre make stories? Um, so what I do, well, I really typically for your stories, I wouldn't recommend batching those, um, except for, so like, if you guys have ever come, actually, I know almost all of you have, for those of you that have come on to my Instagram and you saw me like have graphics on there for like the Instagram workshop or whatever, all of those you can batch in advance. Okay. So if you're going to, let's say that you're going to spend some time today going through all of your old testimonials and turning those into graphics. Maybe you're going to go to Canva. You're going to have Instagram like graphic templates. You're going to create a testimonial from there. Um, you can do that. 
and then you can have all those batched and then you just know what days you're going to post those. Another thing is if you um, want to pre-record like you talking about a particular topic or giving tips, then you can do that just like you would record a reel in advance and save it as a draft. It's the same exact thing. Okay. But for stories, might as well show up in real time if you can. Okay. That's what I do. I don't, I don't pre-make my stories unless it's a graphic. So hopefully that answers your question. All right. Now, how to grow your following with the right people. All right. This is how. Again, it's work. So I want you to understand that there's no magic pill for you. Here it is. Number one, follow people who have liked your current client's photos you've taken. So when your clients, and if you're not, if you're not friending your clients on social media or you're not following them, I want to encourage you to do that because that is how you go beyond just a business relationship and can actually like stay connected and bring value to them outside of just taking their pictures. Okay. So I'm very close with all of my clients. Like my clients follow all of my stuff. So what you want to do though, is when that client posts something or posts the picture you took of them, you want to go through and look if it'll show you. I know some people don't have access to this, but I know you can see comments. So one of the two options, go look and see like who commented on it, who liked it, Go look and see, you know, could they potentially be a good fit for you in the future? Now, you're not going to necessarily know, like, is this person pregnant? Is this person engaged? So that's why you just need to be open to following, you know, a little bit of a variety of people. And then when that season comes for them, you know, they're local. The point is that you're trying to get more local in your area. You're trying to get more like people that are in the same circles because then they're going to remember you when someone needs your type of photography service. Okay. The second way is to follow people from local businesses in your area. So again, go find some of the boutiques, some of the shops, uh, some of the local mom and pop restaurants, or basically any type of business in your area that is Um, owned by someone like, like a small business, you want to go follow them on social media, right? And then you can kind of start looking through who's engaging with their posts, who's following them, who is um, in my area and start following them as well. Now, a lot of people are like, isn't that weird if a photographer is just like following all these random people? Nope. I do it all the time. And half the time I get people that will DM me and be like, I'm so flattered that you started following me. And I'm like, yeah, of course, you know, and then like it opens up conversation. So again, get over yourself, right? Number three, create content for your target market that is also shareable. So when you're creating content once a week, I want one of those pieces of content like your reel or your polarizing opinion post or something like that to be something that someone can share to their own stories. When you do this, you are increasing your reach because they are sharing it, their followers are seeing it, and you will get new people to your account all of the time, okay? So do that. And then ask your followers to tag a friend. So what I used to teach on back when it worked were giveaways. That is actually not something that I recommend you do really anymore um, because it does more harm than it does good. Um, and I, I can go into that later. Um, and if you guys want to hear that explanation, I'll talk about that on a different training. But giveaways, I really would not, I would not participate in those and I would not host those at this point, um, except for like maybe one time a year. And I'll, I'll go into that later. But now what you can do is on your really juicy content um, that really relates with your audience, or if you're giving really good education tips or you're spilling a secret or you're, um, you know, talking about a myth, then you can ask your followers to tag a friend below. And then that friend may or may not already be following you. And that is another way to get like-minded people to your account. Okay. So there you go. Um, this is it. Like, this is the work. This is literally how you grow your account. And then again, every time you have clients and you share their work, tag them in your story so they have the ability to share it in their stories 
So more eyeballs can see your business and know that you exist. And all of these tips can also be duplicated over on Facebook because that I also, I've done both. I've done it in both places and it all works. Every single one of those tips works for Facebook just the same. Okay, there's the Reels training. I knew it. So there is a Reels training for you. Uh, my friend and my graphic designer, Shannon, created amazing training on Reels for you guys. Like it's literally all of her examples are for photography. Um, and there is a link in your workbook. If it doesn't work, let me know. Um, but this was like an amazing training. Okay, don't overcomplicate Instagram. You do not have to master every single feature or sell your soul to the platform. You just need to develop a strategy that you can stick to and enjoy. That's literally like at the end of the day, we don't need to be on 365 days. It doesn't need to be stressful. It should be fun. It should be a place where we can share values, connect with our target market. It just doesn't need to be overcomplicated. And we've definitely overcomplicated this platform. So your action steps. So here we go, right? We're almost to the end. Take your eight types of content and start mapping out what features you're going to be using. Create an Instagram schedule you can commit to for the next three to six months. I want you to create a schedule that you can follow until the end of 2021. Okay, start there. We'll worry about 2022 when we get there. But right now, what are you, how are you going to show up for October, November, and December? That is 90 solid days. And 90 days is typically, statistically, what it takes to gain momentum so you can write it into the new year. Okay. Number three, batch create your content. Okay. So don't wait till the last minute because then you're going to be overwhelmed, but batch create your content. Okay. And then show up like a boss and build your brand and your community on Instagram. Don't worry about the small stuff. It doesn't matter right now. Just show up, own it, create that community and watch your leads flow in. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna do some q and I see there is lots of questions. If you have questions, literally about anything from day one, day two, day three, drop those in the comments. I want to say uh, one other thing and then I will start answering these questions for you. So first of all, thank you guys. I know this is a long one. This is the longest training we've had so far. I knew it would be. If you loved this week and you find value or you love the way and that we were all here for each other. We were able to ask questions. Uh, we were able to cheer each other on. And you're really in a season of your business where you would love to not feel lost and not feel overwhelmed. And you want that mentor and you want that community that is really going to be there to help push you a little bit. I'm one of those people where if I don't have accountability, I really don't like to do things and I don't do it as well. And so if you're one of those people, then I really want you to consider joining us in the From Broke to Booked Blueprint. Basically, in essence, if I was to just break this down, this is obviously it's your roadmap to creating this photography business that you love. And that's truly what it is paired with you get me as a mentor, as a guide, as a friend in this industry to really like give you my personal feedback, get my hands, get my eyes in your business. And you get this amazing group of photographers that are so committed to serving well and building photography businesses that do more than just make us money um, and all of those things. And so I'm also going to, so you guys heard, like I'm updating this program. So what that means is if you join us between now and the weekend, uh, you can start fresh with us. So starting Monday, I am literally walking you through step one, step two, all the way down until we're done teaching it on November 15th. And for the next two months, we're building your business. We're making it better than it already is. We're answering your questions. We're supporting you. Um, there's really no question that you can't ask me that you're not going to get an answer for. And so if you feel like I'm just yeah, like, this is it for me. I want my business to succeed and I don't want to duct tape my business together. Then I really want you to consider joining the from broke to booked blueprint. Um, and you can find all of the information at brookjefferson.com slash blueprint program. I will make a post in the group after this training, just if you want to go check all that out. 
but my heart is in that group. We don't hold back. And I just would love to have you in that community. I know we had a couple of you join already and I was so excited to see that. So we're just, we're very excited to have you guys. And I am in that group almost every single day, giving feedback, looking over your business, your pricing, your packages, all of those things. And I'm just, I'm so passionate. Like this is absolutely 1000% my calling. Okay. So I am going to go back and find some questions. I know there's several. Okay, Leslie said, if you follow someone, does your feed show up in their feed or do they have to follow you back? So um, they do have to follow you in order for your posts and your stories to pop up on their end. So they would have to follow you back. What you're going to notice though, is that the majority of those people you follow, they will follow you right back. They will. Cameron said, how do you balance your followers versus following? I am following way more than those who follow me. I don't want to look desperate for followers. Okay, so back, yeah, this is one of those, like you have to be careful not to be too slimy, right? Um, for me, like, don't look at it as some strategy or technique or whatever. I don't think you look desperate because you're following more people. However, maybe like go do a clean out. Are you following too many photographers? Are you following too many people from high school that you actually like never talk to anymore? You go and you look, there's also a feature if it's still up where if you go to your the people you're following, it will say least interacted with in 90 days. And you can clear out that list if they're not someone that you have interest in following anymore. Um, but I wouldn't like, let's not overthink this. It's a relationship. I think they should be pretty balanced. Now me saying that, please understand, like there's no way I could follow every company, every photographer back. I try so hard, you guys, but there's no way that mine even looks even right now. And it's just, yeah. So I just, I'm saying that with love. If I could start my account again from zero, mine would look way more balanced than it does now. Okay. And it's, there's no, I don't do the follow unfollow thing. I think that's so tacky. Um, that's just not my way of, of doing things. And so I just, I just wanted to give that caveat there. Okay. Do you comment and engage when your client shares their photos on their feed, even when they didn't tag you? Yep. And listen, it, <laughs> I know we want them to tag us and many of them will. And here's the, here's what's funny too. Um, we have to go back to the surface level. We serve them. They really don't owe us anything. It's really not, um, they, they don't have to do it every single time. I still don't do it every single time. Like if I did that, I wouldn't have any content left, right? Because it's just, they get the point. Like they know who took the pictures eventually. But what I do is I, I do, I comment and I love it and all of that stuff. And then nine times out of 10, if I wasn't already tagged, they go back and they tag me after they see that I've seen it. And they're like, oh crap. Some people literally just don't know how to tag you. Like, I'm not joking. You have to treat your people, like give them the benefit of the doubt. Okay. So even if it like, let's, let's not be like, well, you didn't tag me. So I'm just gonna pretend I didn't see that. Let's not do that. Okay. Is it okay to blend your personal life in your business Instagram? I don't have a personal Instagram anymore and just use one. I do, but I don't post anything. Um, like I'm not posting camera shots in my feed because then it breaks up everything that I am trying to do. So all my personal stuff goes in my stories. All, all of those updates are in my stories where I can be, where I can show up and be, um, be us. Okay. Should I delete all my old not on brand, not good editing type photos from my Instagram. Um, Ashley, because I know you, because you're a student of mine, I'm going to say archive them, archive them. So if you ever want to put them back on, you can not instead of deleting them, I'd go ahead and I'd archive them and kind of start fresh. But that's because I know you and you're in my program. And we just talked about this yesterday. So I'm going to say yes, go ahead and archive all of your old stuff that doesn't fit what you're trying to do. Is it safe to say that you need to watch a lot of reels to get ideas to create reels? Um, 
So more what I do is I, you know what, I'm actually, Karen, watch the Reels training because she covers that in depth um, and it's everything I would tell you. Mentoring program is exactly what I need. Yes, Brandy, I hope to see you in there, girl. Okay. Oh, you guys are so sweet. Thank you for that. Uh, Kim, when sharing client love, should you keep client's name confidential, block it out or ask permission first? Okay, so I... I will typically, um, I use their name. I've never had someone say like, please take that down, but I will only use their first name and last initial first name only, or I'll put an emoji over their face. If I'm screenshotting something that they said, most people don't have a problem with you using their name, or I will call them like the Johnson family. You want to keep it as generic as possible. Um, so you're not like completely giving away their privacy, but if it would make you feel better, I would definitely ask like, Hey, I love to share testimonials. Do you mind if I share this with just your, um, family name or just your first name? Typically they'll tell you yes. I'm still struggling on pinning down my ideal client. I know that I want to work with families that have three plus kids. Okay, girl, I'll work with you on that. Okay. Um, thank you, Candace. Yes, Cameron, you're welcome. When a client tags you, what does an at mention tag for your business not show up on your page? Because it's, it looks correct, but doesn't, it won't show up on your page. It'll show up on your, um, if you go to your profile, it will show up on the tagged section. Okay, awesome. All right, well, guys, that's all the questions that I see. I hope to catch many of you in the Blueprint program so we can dive deeper. We don't just talk marketing in there. We cover your branding. Is your business set up legally? You know, how do you pay yourself? Because that's something that this girl did not do for a very long time. Um, and honestly, above all else, we're just there cheering each other on, answering questions and bettering our businesses. So again, if that's you, I'd love to see you in there. And also before I forget, there is a $100 off coupon code. That code is WORKSHOP in all caps to save you $100 off the pay in full option, or you can join us just for the monthly payment. So I'll see you guys inside. I hope you guys enjoyed the Instagram growth workshop. I'll be back in the group to check on your questions and all of your homework. And I hope you guys have an awesome weekend. I will talk to you guys soon.